Okay, so we're going to do a brief history of the moon, kind of comparing the Earth to the moon. And um, then we're going to really get into the moon phases. And at the end of the video, as you go through um, the notes, there's a Ed Puzzle to look at. And then you have a summative quiz at the end on moon phases. So please make sure you're paying attention to the video. Go into the notes that you're in right now. Go down and practice those um, questions. And then uh, watch the other video and take your quiz. You've got eight attempts, so you should be good. All right, so moon history. The moon has um, many craters due to meteor impacts over millions of years. In fact, we go on to say that the more impacts on that part of the moon, the older that portion of the moon's surface tends to be. Where you've had lava erupt and fill in some of those craters, we tend to say those are newer because they have less impact marks. So remember, Maria is just lava flows are those darker areas on the moon, um, but Maria is Latin for seas. That's why we call them Maria. Um, on here we call them a lava flow, but the moon has its own name. So why doesn't the earth have as many craters as the moon? Well, the difference is, while the moon does technically have this little teeny tiny atmosphere that, I mean, you're lucky if it's an inch or two off the surface and it's not like the atmosphere you'd think of here. We have an atmosphere that's dynamic, that changes, that we can have in Minnesota, we get potholes from frost, uh, freezing and thawing cycles when water goes into a crack and makes it pops that make it bigger. Um, we have water, we have wind, and all of those things erode away surfaces of craters. So instead of having this nice, perfectly preserved crater wall, um, freezing and thawing occurs, water dissolves it, water trickles in and freezes and cracks parts off basically mass wasting destroys a lot of those features. We've had them. We're a much bigger mass than um, the moon, so we attract them just as the moon does, and especially a long time ago. It's just that we've had so much time since those occurred that our atmosphere kind of just cleared the surface a little bit. We can still fi find craters. There's Meteor Crater in Arizona. Um, if you look that up, it's a beautiful crater. It's well preserved because it's still fairly young. Um, but we just don't have that. If you're on the moon, and you can see the footprints from the astronauts, they're still perfectly preserved. So unless another astronaut comes and kicks away that, that imprint, um, it pretty much stays. Part of that is also the soil on the moon knits together because it's a lot of like little shards of glass from volcanic activity. So what are some basic characteristics of the moon? Well, think about this. Its diameter is 3,476 kilometers across, which is about the distance across the United States. That's how wide the moon is. Moon is. It's about a fourth of the diameter of the Earth. It has about a sixth of the Earth's gravity because it just has so much less mass than we do. In fact, it's got about 1 82nd of the Earth's mass, roughly. So collision, collision theory goes on to say that about four and a half billion years ago, a planetoid about the size of Mars collided with the Earth. And some of that material from that object and some of Earth's material flew off, flew off into orbit around the Earth. It's combined and solidified to form the moon. So that's why we see a lot of the same characteristics of the moon's um, surface rock is the same as our mantle. So if we take a quick look at this, this is that collision hypothesis. And as we go through this, maybe, let's try it again. There we go. So here's that planetoid sized Mars object colliding with our very young Earth and combining and throwing some of its matter off. Some of its matter actually got absorbed into our core and settled down, the dense material went to the center, and flew off and was orbiting the Earth and basically coalesced. In other words, it, as more and more pieces got stuck together, its gravity pulled more and it kind of cleared its field, a debris field, and created that really hot ball of the moon along at the same time as we had our Earth. Both were starting to cool. Um, the moon has cooled faster than the Earth because the, the Earth just has a lot more mass to it. So again, Maria, dark, large areas of basaltic plains, in other words, big basaltic lava flows. Um, they're formed from ancient volcanic eruptions. There's less reflectivity because they're iron rich composition. Uh, and to the naked eye, they just appear darker. And if you look really carefully, 
all of these things, if you look in the right time of day, depending on how the moon is tilted to your orientation, if you look at it sideways, if you can see the rabbit and you turn your head sideways, that rabbit's ears actually becomes kind of like a winking eye. So some people think they see a rabbit in the moon and some people think they see a face in the moon. This picture sadly doesn't show either one very well, but if you look, you can see it. Um, the same side of the moon always faces the earth. The difference of shape you see is due to how much light is hitting it. And that's what we're really getting into today is those phases. So the amount of light hitting the side of the moon we see half of it's always lit it's just some of it's away from us so we don't see part of it and remember the rotation in the moons on its axis is every 27 and a third days and its revolution around the earth is every 27 and a third days so because of that we always see the same side of the moon that's really cool physics that that actually happened to sync up and as you watch in one of the videos they started to try and explain how that mechanics works that the, due to the gravitational pull, it pulled a lot of the heavier, denser materials towards the Earth side, kind of keeping it in balance. Um, if you don't remember it, go back and watch direct from the moon. Since the moon rotates once in the time it takes to revolve around the Earth, we always see the same side of the moon. By the way, this is an Earth rise from the surface of the moon. Okay, so here is the near side of the moon. Here's the large, dark basaltic lava, or large lava areas. I shouldn't say basaltic, but... That's what I'm used to saying from the earth. It's the big lava flows. They're the dark areas, the maria. These are smoother. They're younger um, because they erupted into some of those craters that we did on that worksheet. This is the far side of the moon, the dark side of the moon. Really, there is no such thing as a dark side. There might be at the axis of the pole where it rotates. There might be one really deep crater where sunlight never hits. But other than that, every part of the surface of the moon sees sunlight during its monthly revolution around the earth. So the dark side of the moon is an inaccurate way of saying there's a dark side that isn't seeing light at one time, but it's not the same part of the moon every day. So we can tell that the far side has um, much older features, much less lava, maria, um, and per square kilometer, you're gonna see a lot more meteor hits there. So this is the part we really need to look at. And so the phase of the moon you see depends on how much of that part of the moon is being lit from the sun. And the phase is roughly every 29 days. And so let's start, let's just go from the beginning. Now, the beginning we usually say is new moon. And you'll notice that the sun is over here on the right and here's the earth. And the new moon basically is when the moon is between us and the sun. Now, most of the time because of the angle, it's a little bit tilted orbital plane to the earth. So only every once in a while does that moon actually fall and create a shadow on the Earth, which is a, an eclipse, or falls behind the Earth and goes into the Earth's shadow, causing a lunar eclipse, which we'll talk about tomorrow. But right now we're just really looking at the phases. So we start with new moon, where we're not seeing the whole side of the moon that we see is in shadow. Nothing. We don't see any reflectivity of light. By the way, the moon does not have a light source of its own. The moon's light that reflects back on us is reflected sunlight. So our moonlight is dependent on the sun, just like our daytime is dependent on the sun. Then in this case, and be careful, you have to look and see because depending on where you're looking from, you know, outer space, the sun could be here at the bottom over there. So just be careful that you're always looking for where the sun is coming from. So new moon, we don't see anything. And then as it comes a little bit around the side, we start to get just this little teeny tiny crescent shape of lit part of the moon. And we always look at the right side of the moon to tell us which way we're going. If the right side of the moon is lit, we know we're going to full moon. If the right side of the moon is in shadow, we're knowing we're going to new moon. In other words, whichever side is on the right is getting bigger. So if it's getting brighter on the right, we're going full. And if it's getting darker on the right, we're going towards new. So that's kind of how you remember. Always look at the right side of the moon. The right side of the moon tells us what the phase is. So the name here, if you look on this whole half right here, you'll notice these are both crescents. It's just teeny, teeny, tiny parts of the moon are in, are, are lit. The rest is in shadow. So a crescent moon is a tiny sliver. On the other side, you see on this side of the line, these are, just depends on which side is lit, the right side or the left side. 
but this is more than halfway full and that's called gibbous. So our crescent and our gibbous are our shape names. And if half of it is lit, that's a quarter moon. It could be first quarter or third quarter. Sometimes third quarter is called last quarter. So let's go from here, new moon to crescent. And since it's getting brighter on the right, we call it waxing, like wax on, you know, make brighter, polish a car. So waxing moons get brighter. So this is a waxing crescent. First quarter, Mo the, termina the terminator line is literally straight down the center. Half of the moon that we see is lit, which is a quarter of the full moon. So we call it first quarter, quarter of it's lit. Once we go past first quarter, it's still light on the right. And now it is still waxing. It's still getting brighter. We're still going towards full moon, but now it's called gibbous. So this is a waxing gibbous. When the whole portion, so basically the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun, the whole moon face is lit up. And that's called, guess what, full moon. This is probably the phase you're most familiar with. Now, as we go from full moon towards new moon, look at the right side. There's a shadow starting to grow over here. So the shadow is growing bigger. And as the shadow comes across, the light goes away. It wanes away. So we call it waning. So again, it's more than half lit. So it's a waning gibbous. Now we're back to that terminator where half of the moon is in darkness that we see and half of it is lit. So again, it's a quarter of the moon that we see the full of the full moon is lit from what we see, but you'll notice now the shadows on the right. So this is our third quarter or last quarter. And now the shadow is more than halfway and we just see this little teeny tiny crescent, but the bulk of the right side is in shadow. So again, it's waning, but it's a waning crescent. And when all of that's back and eaten up because now the moon is between us and the sun again, that's a new moon. So on here, and this is a link to um, a lunar calendar. This is this month of October. And as we go through it, we can see that we just had a full moon here. And I, I highlighted the main points. Full moon, this would be light. So this is last quarter, right? Because it's getting darker and that would make sense from full moon, we should have shadow on the right side. And so here's our last quarter. And then here is our waning crescent. Here's a waning gibbous. As we move to total, see this blue box right here? Total shadow. So that's a new moon. This The moon is between the earth and the sun. And now you'll see little tiny bits of light starting to creep, getting bigger and bigger, bigger crescents until we have 50%. And that is first quarter because now the light is on the right. So a quarter of the moon the, the half that we see is lit and you'll see that light on the right keeps getting bigger and bigger. And this is our my gibbous because it's more than half until again, um, we have a full moon this month for this year happens to have a full moon on the first and the last day of the year. And because of that, there's a special name for a second full moon in one month and it's called a blue moon. So a blue moon isn't actually blue. A blue moon happens because two full moons occur in the same calendar month. So we're starting with a full moon and we're ending with a full moon. All right, here's the basic rules that I've just gone through. Light on the right is called waxing. Shadow on the right is called waning. I'll go fix that, but just know that's supposed to be shadow on the right is waning. Just a sliver of the moon is lit. It's called a crescent. Half of the moon is lit. It's either first or third quarter, otherwise sometimes called last quarter. More than half of the moon is lit is gibbous. Whole moon is lit. It's full. And if the full moon is in shadow, that's a new moon. So, this is the one I like to do. Um, by the way, this would be a really good thing to draw on a piece of paper because when I shut this off and you have your next quiz, um, you can have this and as a good reference. But this is the one I like to talk about and I'd spend a lot of time in class going through this. And you're going to see here is the sun now is on the left. So be careful which direction we're going. And it travels the same way. Just the sun is on the other side now. Here's the earth in the center, here's the sun on the left, and here's our, our moon. So if the moon is directly between the sun 
and the earth. That's our new moon. And then we go into crescent, but the light is on the right. So it's getting brighter. So it's a waxing crescent. Now you'll see this purple line here. So basically everything to the left of that purple line, those are crescents. Everything to the right of the orange line, those are gibbous. And if you're on that purple orange line, those are your quarters. If you're on the red green line, those are your new and full moons. Okay. So look at the right side. The moon is becoming more and more prevalent. This should be dark, but I couldn't find that. So just go with the fact that I'm showing you the part of the moon that's lit. New moon, waxing crescent next. Once it goes to the terminator is halfway of what we see. That's first quarter. It's still getting lighter on the right. So I go to waxing gibbous until finally the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun and the entire face of the moon we see is lit. Now watch, the right side is starting to go away. There's a shadow over there. And that's your waning gibbous because still more than half of the moon is lit. We go to our terminator coming straight down halfway and we have last quarter, otherwise known as third quarter. And from there, more and more shadows creeping on the right. And we just have a teeny tiny crescent to the moon picking out. So it's a waning crescent. So new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, new moon, waning gibbous, last quarter or third quarter, waning crescent back to new moon. You need to be able to determine what those are. So what you're going to do next is go into the notes and answer these questions. Here's my sunlight, just like this one is on the right. So what would A be? Well, you should know that that's between the sun and the earth. That should be your new moon. D should be your full moon. You need to try and figure out B. So remember, here's the arrows that we're going. So we're going from new moon and ignore the, the picture. It's just, just go with the dot. It should be a dot and tell me what would be at that dot's location. So there's what you're going to go through and figure out. I actually identified them, a new moon entirely in shadow, waxing crescent, tiny silver of a moon. I'm not trying to trick you. I didn't even put in the extra one. So you're only going to use those once. This was from 2016, and this is a year of moon phases. Now let's try that again. Maybe. Maybe you'll have to watch this in the notes if this isn't going to start playing. There we go. Lunar Rover uh, Reconnaissance Orbiter. So Lunar Rover would be on the surface. Sorry. So this is a moon. See the shadow is growing across the right. So that's waxing. It's going away. Wax away. Wax on bright. Now we went from new moon fully in shadow. The shadow is going away on the left. It's getting brighter on the right. This is waxing until we get directly across from the sun and we're at full moon. Now the shadow grows on the right. We're in waning gibbous quarter, waning crescent, new moon, light shows up on the right. We're at waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, new moon, light on the right, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon. One more time, waning gibbous, last quarter or third quarter, waning crescent, new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon. So here are phases. Always look at the right side of the moon. That tells you if it's light on the right, we're going towards full. If it's dark on the right, we're going towards new. So the moon does a lot of things for our earth. The position of the moon, the earth and the sun causes phases of the moon. But it also, if it's just lines up right, we can get eclipses and that tug of the moon on the earth causes tides. And these last two things, those are what we're going to look at tomorrow in class. Make sure you've gone through and answered both questions. The last one is really easy. You've reviewed all those things. 
And as always, if you need help, come and see me. Jump on Zoom, whichever way we're doing this. Have a great day.